What is going on guys and welcome back to Touchdowns to Home Runs. My name is Bernie. Thank you for joining us today on the Touchdowns to Home Run show. I hope that your day is going absolutely fantastic. Today we're going to be doing sort of a Michigan Wolverines football season breakdown. We'll be going over each one of the games on their schedule and I'll also be giving you my thoughts on each aspect of their depth chart. I know that Michigan might potentially play more games. I know they might schedule a game next week if their COVID situation dies down. I know that all FBS teams are bowl eligible this year. So again, that's still a possibility for the Michigan Wolverines. But for today, we're just going to be breaking down, I guess what you would call the regular season. But with the past two games for the Wolverines being canceled, really this season has been far from a regular season. But before we get into the video, make sure to check out the Touchdowns to Home Runs merch. We have some great Michigan Wolverines designs, really good quality, really funny designs. And again, the actual merch itself is fantastic quality. We have hoodies, we have t-shirts, they all come in a variety of colors. Definitely make sure to check those out. It's on the Touchdowns to Home Run store. You can find all those links down in the description below. But anyways, Michigan, at this point in the season, two and four could potentially be the end, could potentially not be. Hopefully we still um, can get another game in. But you know what? This was a really weird season, and it seems like a long time ago, but this was a season that people at one point were saying, is this the best Harbaugh team? that he's coached, at least in his time in Michigan. You know, they started the season off a Minnesota team who had high expectations. Not only were they ranked, but they were coming off an 11 win season and Michigan looked fantastic. And it was the first start for Joe Milton, who was the first quarterback to start at Michigan, who was recruited by Jim Harbaugh. And he looked really, really good. We knew he was mobile. We knew that he, you know, could throw really far downfield, but he was seeing the field well. And they put up 49 points in that game in a defense that we thought was going to be pretty good coming into the season. And Michigan looked good on two sides of the ball. Again, high expectations being created for them from that game. But obviously, now that we look at it at the end of the season, they were far from that. And it didn't take that long to kill the expectations. Week two, Michigan takes a very, very disappointing, tough loss to the Michigan State Spartans. This, you know, Harbaugh has not been great against Michigan State, even though year in, year out, they're not a fantastic team. Harbaugh is now 3-3 three and three against them. We got absolutely destroyed by Ricky White, and we didn't see really anything we saw in week one. Milton, this is where he started to get inconsistent. Defense didn't look great. This was the time where Vincent Gray in the secondary was having some major, major issues, even more than they're, you know, currently having at the end of the season. And again, it was really disappointing. Then we went into, you know, an Indiana team where we lose that game. But going into that, we didn't really know what to expect from Indiana. We know that they had some big wins against a Penn State team, but, you know, they didn't end up being fantastic. But, you know, Indiana down the line in the season, they ended up looking very good. Again, our secondary got killed. Indiana had some very talented wide receivers. When you look at guys like Watt Fillier, Ty Fry Fogel, our secondary again got destroyed. And again, it was Vincent Gray, but he did end up improving throughout the season. Then we faced Wisconsin. Now, this was a very interesting game. High expectations from Wisconsin absolutely destroy us. It was probably the worst half of football that I've seen from a football team in the first half. I think they got outscored like 28 to nothing. And this is a Wisconsin team that I'm pretty sure ended up losing the next week after that. But Wisconsin, very talented team. But Michigan got absolutely destroyed. Both sides of the football as well. Sort of the most competitive, I guess, game of the season, depending on the way you want to look at it, was the game against Rutgers. Now, Rutgers, again, not a fantastic team, but they're a team who improved this year. They got a bunch of transfers you know, this is a more talented team than Rutgers teams that we've seen in the past. But still, you know, nowhere up to the mid or upper tier of the Big Ten. They're, they're still a bottom team. And this is still a team that Michigan has outscored like 260 to 30 in the past few years or something along those lines. But this was a game that Michigan was down by, I think, 17. And it took two overtimes to beat Rutgers. And this is sort of where, you, you know, I do post-game shows if you check those out. And I sort of sat back and I said, like, what are we doing? Like, even though Rutgers, you know, took a step forward this year, and they did, you know, Michigan is not only a historical program who, you know, gets a pick from essentially all the recruits they want when you look at them having a top 10 recruiting class or top 20 recruiting class every single year. 
I mean, there's no reason that you shouldn't be able to create separation from a team like Rutgers, even in a down year. And I'm sure that people, Michigan fans who are watching this video, can agree with me. This was also, you know, the game where we saw Cade McNamara. He, he, was, he was really good. Um, we saw him mostly in the second half, but towards the end of the first half. And, and again, there was sort of new life created for Michigan. This offense looked fantastic when Cade McNamara came back on the field. And even a defense that was hurt at the time sort of got momentum just because, you know, Michigan as a team had momentum, scoring points. And they ended up taking that. And then we went into the Penn State game. Penn State had not won a game this year. They were 0-5. Obviously, we lose to them. Our offense had all kinds of problems. Unfortunately, Cade McNamara got injured in that game as well. It was the first game where we really started running the ball, but again, that, that, that's easily, in my opinion, the most disappointing game of the season. Just to hand, hand Penn State that first win of the season and to play as bad as we did that game. Anyways, let's flip over. Let's take a look at some of the depth charts and just my overall opinion on what I saw from some players this season. Let's start with the quarterback situation. I've spoken to it quite a bit. Joe Milton, extremely talented guy, throws the ball far, is able to move his feet, but he can't really find any consistency, accuracy, or really get his teammates sort of on board with him. Kate McNamara's a less talented quarterback. I feel pretty confident saying that. But for whatever reason, he was able to get, you know, the receivers in a better positions. The offense just overall clicked better when McNamara was on the field. McNamara didn't look good in his last games, though. You know, he didn't look consistent either. And they sort of, you know, McNamara wasn't throwing the deep ball. They were settling with just throwing flat routes. And unfortunately, when you don't test a secondary, even if there's incomplete passes downfield, when you don't test the secondary, they don't have to worry about it. And we saw it in the Penn State game, who especially in the second half of that game, you know, were able to cover the flats. Moving forward, we have J.J. McCarthy coming in next year. I don't know if he's going to start right away. The way that's trending now, I'd probably like to see him start right away, him or McNamara, but I expect, you know, J.J. McCarthy at some point early on in the season to definitely be our starter. In terms of the running game, you know, there was four different main people that we saw in the backfield led by Hassan Haskins. Hassan Haskins was good, inconsistent, but I think that our offense as a whole had trouble getting the running game going. And I, and I spoke to this in a previous video as well. You know, we saw in the Penn State game that we sort of had three really, really talented backs. Blake Corum, Chris Evans, Hassan Haskins. And, and the backfield when we used all three of them in sort of a balanced scheme looked really, really good, especially in that second half of the Penn State game. And I just, I don't understand why we didn't use that. You know, we had quarterbacks who were inaccurate or who, who could have used, you know, a running game getting going to open up parts of the field. But we just didn't do it. And then when we did sort of start using the running game, we were running in all the wrong spots. A run, run, pass. Our offense, you know, for the majority of the season wasn't getting into good positions, you know, early on in downs and not setting up our offense in good positions for third down. In terms of receiving, we were hurt at some points. I want to just highlight two things. The first, Ronnie Bell. Ronnie Bell, you know, is, is our most talented receiver. And I'm confident saying that. But Ronnie Bell throughout the season did not really get a lot of touches. You know, he wasn't our leading receiver in many games. We didn't see him getting involved. You know, and when he's a talented receiver, again, even if he's not getting catches, you know, draw two defenders. Draw, you know, defenders to you. Make people worry about you. So you have to target Ronnie Bell, especially at the starts of the game. But they didn't do that. They were only targeting him usually, like, right out of halftime. But, you know, if you look at a team like the Buffalo Bills and the way they use Stephon Diggs, especially over the middle of the field, even when he's not getting catches, he opens up the defense for those other guys. Just because people know Diggs will catch the ball if you don't focus on him. And even when they're not throwing to him again, it's just creating space. And Michigan didn't use Ronnie Bell like that, and I think that was a huge, huge issue for them. The other one, though, is A.J. Henning. This guy's fantastic. He's fast. He's great downfield. We saw him make some spectacular catches. Didn't get a, a ton of touches, you know, but he got more throughout the season. And, and this guy is a guy, I think, that is going to be one of our top receivers as we go, you know, into the future. I think we'll be seeing more of him next year and probably even more of him in two years. This is a guy that I'm extremely, extremely excited for. In terms of defense, we were really hurt. 
you know, we lost a lot of guys on defense as well, but we still had a lot of veterans. When you look at guys like Hutchison, Quiddy Pay, you know, but it was really our secondary that caused problems this year. Vincent Gray, Daxton Hill were not fantastic this season. They both had their, you know, times where they were getting beat downfield. Not only getting beat downfield, but, you know, issues with defending without penalties. You know, I think it was a little tough, the positions that Don Brown was putting them in, constantly switching between mans and zones. And, and I just think the defensive play calling overall was really easy for the offense to predict. And I... I don't know. I, I just think that they weren't put into fantastic situations, but they themselves also didn't do a good job. And again, you would know if you watch the post-game shows how upset I've been at our secondary all year. And our defense overall is not great. And I think, you know, if Har Jim Harbaugh stays with Michigan, you know, I think that Don Brown is definitely the first guy to go along with some other um, coaches on that staff. Because I think, you know, at the end of the day, Harbaugh gets you recruiting. Don Brown is not doing anything for the Michigan Wolverines. And he's been getting progressively better in his defensive stats since his first year that he's been with the Michigan Wolverines. But anyways, that's sort of my breakdown on the Michigan Wolverines season. Again, not a lot of ups. Definitely a lot of downs, you know. But there's still a lot to talk to. And, and you know, hopefully we still play this season. But, you know, it's going to be a really, really interesting next couple of weeks when we look at the Jim Harbaugh situation, the situation of these other assistant coaches. So let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let's get a discussion going. You know, hopefully Michigan starts trending in that right direction. But again, if you like this video, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to Touchdowns to Home Runs. If you haven't already, again, make sure to check out the merch. The links for those will be down in the description below. Touchdowns to Home Runs store. Definitely make sure to get some of those designs. Again, if you made it to this point in the video, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.